They're winning 60% of their games at the current market price. Their offense is putting up three and a half goals per contest. That actually ranks fifth in the NHL. Now, scoring-wise, Pittsburgh is 6-2 and two to the over in their last eight. Florida, 6-1 and one to the over in their last seven. So with all that in mind, once again, another very square, very boring, chalky play. Uh, but I got to do it. I think it's our only option here. Give me Pittsburgh, minus 1.5, getting the job done on the puck line. Uh, once again, they're getting plus 125 on the puck line there. So once again, Pittsburgh, minus 1.5 one, uh, one and a half on the puck line. And the over 6.5 goals in that matchup there. All right, <clears throat> next and final game, just covering three games here in our NHL slate. It is going to be Winnipeg at Tampa Bay, 730 puck drop in Florida. The Lightning open 185, total open at 7. And since those markets open this one up, we're still at that 7 number. Uh, normally when you see a total open uh, 7 or above, immediately the markets react and move it down. But not in this case. Uh, we're seeing uh, good action uh, when it comes to the total, and that's holding firm at an even seven goals. Now, we did see a nickel move on the money line, Tampa Bay taking money in the early, uh, early going here. So once again, the Lightning open 185, up to minus 190. Uh, totals at seven. 56% are leaning Winnipeg, 67% shaded toward the under. And at the moment, the Jets are plus 160 on the money line. Tampa Bay plus 135, laying the goal and a half. Uh, Hellebuck's projected in net for Winnipeg. Vasilevsky projected in net for Tampa Bay. Now, Tampa's been excellent this year. They've won 11 out of their last 12. They're also 32-7, and seven, taking on teams allowing more than 2.9 goals per contest. The Lightning rank first in the NHL in home scoring. They're averaging 4.2 goals per contest on their home ice. They are also ranking fourth in home goals allowed. Uh, they're giving up just 2.4 Goals per contest at the Amelie Arena, Amelie Center. I always forget what it's, a, what, it, what it's called. Let me know in the comments section. Is it center or arena? I forget, I forget what it is. Uh, but anyway, Winnipeg, on their side of things, they're just 4-9 and nine ATS in their last 13. And, of course, I always explain it, but when I'm talking about hockey and ATS, I'm actually referring to the puck line. So out of their last 13 games, they only covered – four puck lines. They only had four puck line plays that cashed out of their last 13 games. They're also winning just 46% of their games as the official road underdog. Now when it comes to scoring, Winnipeg's just 41% to the over, taking on teams allowing 2.6 to 2.9 goals per contest. Meanwhile, on the Tampa side, uh, they're just 43% to the over when Vasilevsky makes the start. So with all that said and done, um, I, got, I gotta do uh, another puck line play. I gotta lay the one and a half on Tampa Bay, but I do think this one is going to stay under the seven goals in that matchup there. All right, let's go ahead and slide into some uh, college basketball action. Got a nice little slate, some competitive games here uh, for tonight. So I have one, two, three. I got four games we're going to go ahead and take a look at, and the first one is not Xavier Butler. It's actually going to be Nebraska at Michigan State, uh, seven o'clock tip-off at Sparty. Now, Sparty open minus 13, total open 138. And since the market's opened this one up, we're seeing movement on both the over and Michigan State. Uh, Sparty's now minus 13 and a half, total moved up to 139. So once again, Michigan, uh, Michigan State open 13, up to minus 13 and a half, total open 138, up to 139. 61% are leaning toward Michigan State, 63% shaded toward the under. Now, uh, Nebraska has Copeland and Davis both out for the season. They're, uh, you're not going to see them back. Meanwhile, on the Michigan State side, uh, Aarons and Ward are out indefinitely. So uh, they're still out indefinitely, not playing tonight. That's Aarons and Ward. Uh, regardless, so Michigan State, 5-1 and one straight up in their last six, 4-2 and two against the spread in that same category. They rank third in college basketball in home defensive field goal percentage. They also rank second in the country in home offensive rebounding. Now, total-wise, Nebraska's 3-0 to the over when traveling. Michigan State, they're scoring 84 points per contest on their home court. I'm going to purchase the half a point, slide it down, and take Sparty minus 13 in the over, 139 in that matchup there. Next game, we're actually skipping Wake Forest-Duke. We're not covering that today, uh, but we are going to take a look at Virginia Tech at FSU. 
and that is going to be a 7 o'clock tip-off at Florida State. The Seminoles opened the betting as the four-point favorite. Total opened 136, and since that one opened up, we're seeing movement toward the under. We're also seeing movement toward Florida State. They're now minus 4.5. Total moved down to 135 and a hook. So once again, the Seminoles opened 4, up to minus 4.5. Total opened 136, down to 135 and a hook. 60% of the consensus is leaning toward Florida State. 73% of the consensus is shaded toward the over. Now, Robinson is out indefinitely for Virginia Tech. Uh, they're just 2-5 and five against the spread in their last seven. The Hokies also rank 237th in college basketball in offensive rebounding. Uh, they're covering just 40% of their games that tipped off at the current point spread. Now, Florida State, completely different story. They're actually covering 71% of their games that tipped off at the current point spread themselves. They're 10-1 straight up in their last 11. Uh, they're led by Fiondu Cavendale, I'm sorry, Cavendale, who's scoring 13 points per contest and bringing down six rebounds per contest. Now, scoring-wise, FSU is 6-1 to the under in their last seven, taking on Virginia Tech if you're into historical trends. Meanwhile, Va Tech is 4-1 to the over in their last five. I'm going to purchase the hook, slide it down, and take FSU minus four in the over 135 and a half in that matchup there. All right, next game, Mississippi State at Tennessee, and that's going to be a nine o'clock tip-off at Tennessee. The Vols open minus eight and a half, total open 148 and a hook, and since that one opened up, uh, we're seeing a slight fade of the Vols when it comes to the spread. We're also seeing movement downward on the total as well. That line moved down to 148. Uh, the spread moved down to minus eight. So once again, Tennessee opened eight and a half, down to minus eight. Total open 148 and a half, down to 148 even. 63% uh, leaning toward Tennessee, 60% shaded toward the under. Now, Mississippi State uh, has Nick Weatherspoon uh, listed as out indefinitely with a suspension. Now, Nick Weatherspoon is not the same as uh, Quinn Weatherspoon. Uh, Quinn is the, uh, the, the leading scorer on Mississippi State, but Nick Weatherspoon uh, is uh, out indefinitely with a suspension of some sort. Uh, Nick actually, I, I think, is averaging double digits, so uh, might have a little bit of an impact on this game. Uh, regardless, Mississippi State is covering just 25% of their games as the official road underdog. Meanwhile, Tennessee on the other side, they're covering 80% of their games that tipped off at the current number. They're also ranking sixth in the nation in field goal percentage. They're shooting 50.2% from the field. Uh, that's incredible. Very, very good. Sixth in college basketball in that stat there. The Vols are being led by Grant Williams, who's scoring 19 points per contest. He's actually bringing down eight rebounds a game as well. When it comes to the total, Tennessee's 3-1 and one of the under in their last four. Uh, Michigan State, 6-1 and one of the under in their la I'm sorry, Mississippi State, 6-1 and one of the under in their last seven. Uh, give me Tennessee, minus eight, and the under 148 in that matchup there. All right, next and final game for our college slate, it is going to be Kentucky at Ole Miss, 9 o'clock tip-off at Ole Miss. Uh, the Wildcats of Kentucky opened the betting as the 5.5-point favorite, total open 139. And since that one opened up, uh, not a whole lot of movement on the spread, seeing some uh, pretty good two-way action, a little bit more action on Kentucky, but we're still holding at that 5.5 number. Uh, we are seeing movement upward on the total. That moved up to 140 and a half. So once again, Kentucky opens and remains minus five and a half. Total open 139, up to one, uh, excuse me, up to 140 and a hook. 60% uh, of the consensus is leaning toward Kentucky. And uh, at the moment, uh, Kentucky has uh, Reed Travis, who's out with an ankle injury. Uh, <clears throat> let's try that again. Kentucky has Reed Travis, who is out with an ankle injury uh, that could be impactful for this game because Kentucky's just uh, one in three ATS in their last four. They also rank 177th in defending the three ball. Uh, they lost by 19 to Tennessee in their last ball game. Now, Ole Miss, they're 2 0 against the number in their last couple of games, 5 2 ATS in their last seven. Uh, they're being led by Brain Tyree, who's scoring 18 points per contest. And, uh, well, Ole Miss is covering 80% of their games that tipped off at the current point spread. Now, total-wise, Ole Miss is 71% to the over, taking on teams allowing less than 67 points per contest. So with all that in mind, 
I'm going to lean toward the home dog in this one. I'm also going to purchase the half a point, slide it up, and take Ole Miss plus six in the over 140 and a half in that matchup there. All right, folks, let's go ahead and slide into some NBA 